Hello everyone and welcome back to the program. We're coming up on the 30th anniversary of Herbert W. Armstrong's death. He died on January 16, 1986 at the age of 93. Now as many of you know, Herbert Armstrong's incredible legacy lives on to this day. But on today's program we look back on the incredible impact of this man and his work. Just a few weeks after Mr. Armstrong died, Time Magazine published a story on the growing popularity of tele-evangelists in America. Preachers like Jimmy Swaggart, Oral Roberts, Jim Baker, and Jerry Falwell. Time compared the reach of all their television programs. And yet, did you know that all of their programs were dwarfed by Mr. Armstrong's program, The World Tomorrow? It had twice the reach of any other religious program in America. Herbert W. Armstrong was one of the best known, most prominent religious leaders of the 20th century. He met with heads of state and leaders from all over the world. He established a unique liberal arts college that had three campuses on two continents. One of those campuses was right here in Great Britain. Mr. Armstrong's flagship magazine was called The Plain Truth. It focused on current events and the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. It was published in seven languages. In 1985, its worldwide circulation peaked at 8.4 million. That same year, Time Magazine had a circulation of just 5.9 million. One out of every 583 human beings on Earth received the Plain Truth Magazine during the mid-1980s. In the United States, it was one in 48. In Canada, it was one in 27. Even here in the UK, chances are you might know someone who used to listen to Mr. Armstrong's radio program or who subscribed to the Plain Truth magazine in the early 1970s or 80s. In the early 1970s, there were more than 400,000 people receiving the Plain Truth right here in the UK, either through the mail or by picking it up off the newsstand. At the time of Mr. Armstrong's death in 1986, there were 150,000 households in the UK subscribing to the Plain Truth magazine. Mr. Armstrong also wrote dozens of books and booklets that were sent to tens of millions of people all over the world. Six million people requested the United States and Britain in prophecy. Another three million requested his booklet, The Seven Laws of Success. Between 1980 and 1984, the church distributed about 362 million books, booklets, magazines, newspapers, lessons, and letters. And then in 1985, the last year of Mr. Armstrong's life, his church set new records in nearly every category. It answered more than a million phone calls, and it received 6.7 million pieces of mail that year. It added 2.1 million new names to its database. It distributed about 86 million publications, all that in 1985. Now, out of all those millions of requests, people were asking for one title more than any other in 1985. It was a book that Mr. Armstrong finished just four months before he died. And it was absolutely the greatest book he wrote in his entire 50-year ministry. On today's program, we remember Herbert W. Armstrong, and we offer you a complimentary copy of his greatest work, Mystery of the Ages. The Trumpet Daily. Our regular viewers know that over the past year here in the UK, we've been working toward a goal of distributing 2,000 of these books, Mystery of the Ages. We offer it to you freely no cost or obligation, just call the operator to receive this wonderful book written by Herbert Armstrong in the last year of his life. You know, when he offered it for the first time 30 years ago, it took just three months and 750,000 people had received this book. 
It's amazing. It was well on its way to being the most popular book he ever produced. And yet there's a sad and tragic history that followed uh, the release of that book in 1985. I'd like to show you a few excerpts, though, from a tribute program. This was prepared by the Worldwide Church of God following the death of Mr. Armstrong. And on these excerpts, you'll see some, some really amazing history about Herbert Armstrong's ministry. And then it also offers, for the first time on the airwaves, it offered Mystery of the Ages to the general public. It's from January of 1986. The following is a special presentation of The World Tomorrow. Herbert W. Armstrong was one of the pioneers of religious broadcasting. His voice was first heard on the air in 1933, when he was offered 15 minutes of airtime on station KORE, then broadcasting with only 100 watts to the towns and villages of the Willamette Valley in Oregon. In later years, Mr. Armstrong would often reminisce about his early experiences in broadcasting. Then, in October 1933, I had an opportunity to go on the local radio station five mornings for 15 minutes. It was free time, and they couldn't get ministers and local churches to take the time, and so I was able to get it, and of course I didn't have to pay for it. Now that led to the radio church. There was quite a lot of mail coming in, and the manager of the station asked me then to start a regular Sunday program. And so the church went on the air, and I did the speaking on the first Sunday in 1934. That was the beginning of the what we call then the Radio Church of God. February 1st, The Plain Truth came out with its first issue, mimeographed. Only about 350 copies were made. Although Mr. Armstrong did not realize it then, those first broadcasts and the first mimeographed copies of the Plain Truth magazine were the beginning of what was to become a worldwide work to fulfill the great commission that Jesus Christ gave his church. Mr. Armstrong himself wrote in his autobiography, at last in the light of fast developing world encircling events, it became apparent what was actually happening back in 1934 was precisely this. Jesus Christ was opening the gigantic mass media door of radio and the printing press for the proclaiming of his same original gospel to all the world. Today, my friends, we are in the time as foretold by Jesus when he said that this is the beginning of sorrows, just the beginning of trouble and of sorrows in the world today. And so again today, my friends, I want you to notice first Jesus' Olivet Prophecy found in the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew. Matthew 24. It was a small and humble beginning, but like the proverbial grain of mustard seed, the work was destined to grow. By 1944, the World Tomorrow radio program could be heard throughout the United States. In 1953, it went on the most powerful station on earth at that time, Radio Luxembourg, broadcasting to the British Isles and the continent of Europe. The World Tomorrow. From the World Tomorrow first became a television program in 1955, when television was a relatively new medium. Broadcaster and editor Herbert W. Armstrong reveals the startling significance behind today's world troubles with the prophecies of the world tomorrow. Later, Mr. Armstrong was to make many telecasts from the studio of the world tomorrow in Pasadena, powerfully proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ were here today, he would preach the same thing that you hear me preach. Look into your Bible. Don't believe me. Look into your own Bible, and you'll see that everything that I'm telling you comes right out of the Bible. It is God speaking, and it is the, the, the very message of God. As the World Tomorrow program began to be heard worldwide, the plain truth circulation also began to grow, first in thousands and then in millions. 
The Plain Truth is unique among the world's mass circulation magazines, carefully analyzing the real meaning behind the news of the day, foretelling trends in world events with an accuracy that is based on the prophecies of the Bible. New languages were added over the years, German, French, Spanish, Dutch, Italian, and Norwegian. Today, The Plain Truth has a circulation of 8 million, with readers in nearly every country on Earth. Mr. Armstrong remained active as editor-in-chief until the end of his life. He was present at the printing plant of R.R. R. Donnelly in Glasgow, Kentucky, when the 50th anniversary edition of The Plain Truth rolled off the presses. This 50th anniversary edition is still sent as an introductory copy to all new subscribers. In 1967, a remarkable door was opened for Mr. Armstrong to begin to reach some of the most important and influential men and women in the world. For almost 20 years, Mr. Armstrong traveled thousands of miles, meeting with kings, emperors, presidents, prime ministers, and leaders of many nations. The walls of his study are lined with mementos of those visits, gifts from the leaders of nations great and small. I probably have visited more heads of government in their own offices than any other man. What do I talk about? I talk about the conditions that they're confronted with. I talk about world conditions and problems, problems that are far greater than they themselves are able to cope with. I talk about the cause of these conditions. I go as an ambassador, an unofficial ambassador for world peace, and they receive me as an ambassador for world peace. But I have to tell them why we don't have peace. I have to show them how peace is going to come and why we don't have it. And you know, that makes sense to heads of state. They're practical men. They see these things about them all the time. And they begin to listen when I talk about those things. Do I talk about the kingdom of God? Yes, I do. And God is going to intervene. And sometimes I tell them that straight out. They've called me an unofficial ambassador for world peace, and so I am. But let me say that there has to be a reason why we don't have peace. And you cannot have peace until there is something that will cause that peace. And there has to be a reason why something has caused us to have just the opposite of peace in this world today. And I'm afraid so many don't understand that. We do not have peace and will not have peace until human nature has been changed. Mr. Armstrong was able to view the 20th century from a unique perspective. In his long life, he saw the coming of the inventions that made possible this modern age. The airplane, radio, and television. The computer, and space travel. Inventions that have changed our world, but not our thinking. We're offering you two books today on this program, Mystery of the Ages, of course, but then also Raising the Ruins, as you've learned on this program. I mean, we're now 30 years on from Herbert Armstrong's death, and a lot has happened. A lot happened to the organization that he established, and much of that history is talked about in this book, Raising the Ruins. We'll offer both of them to you for free if you just take down the information on your screen and either call our operators or you can text us at 80800, just type REQ, followed by your address. But if you already have Mystery of the Ages or you already have Raising the Ruins, just please call our operators and, and tell us which one you don't have so that we can finish out your library and make sure that you can learn the whole story there. This really sums up Mr. Armstrong's ministry, his 50-year ministry. 
And then this tells the history of what happened since he died in 1986. We have just one more excerpt that we'd like to play for you from that special tribute program from January 1986. In August 1914, Europe erupted in war. For four terrible years, the great powers battled each other until they reached a standstill in the fields of France and Belgium. When the conflict was over and the armistice signed, a generation of young men had been slaughtered. The world was sobered. Weapons had become so powerful the destruction so complete, surely civilization could not survive another war like this. This had to be the war to end all wars. Following the armistice, King Albert I of Belgium visited a battlefield in his shattered kingdom. Appalled by the scenes of ruin and slaughter, the king ordered an iron shell casing found on the battlefield to be cast into four watch cases. He intended to present the watches to the four individuals who he felt had made the most significant contribution to peace. One watch went to Field Marshal Ferdinand Foch, head of the Allied Supreme Command. Another was given to General John J. Pershing, commander-in-chief of the American Expeditionary Force. The third watch was presented to France's premier, Georges Clemenceau, for his inspiring leadership in the dark days of war. But King Albert did not find anyone qualified to receive the fourth watch. When King Albert died, it was passed on to his son, King Leopold III. In 1970, Half a century after the end of World War I, King Leopold presented this fourth watch to Herbert W. Armstrong. In accepting it, Mr. Armstrong said, I feel it was the highest honor the king could have paid anyone. Whatever contribution to world peace I may be making is not through war, but through education, teaching millions worldwide the way to peace. The world has tried everything that man can conceive of for world peace. They have worked for world peace. They have fought for world peace. They have striven for world peace. But nothing has brought world peace. World War I was supposed to be the war that would end all wars. It didn't end wars. Then came World War II, and it was labeled as the war to end all wars. But as a matter of fact, more than 140 wars have occurred since the end of World War II. This book, the Holy Bible, says that the way of peace they know not. But men do not know the way to world peace. There has to be a cause for everything that has happened. In these last decades of the 20th century, Many philosophers, commentators, and newscasters see that the problems of the world have reached a crisis point. Many leaders have recognized that we may indeed be approaching Armageddon. Mr. Armstrong, through his understanding of biblical prophecy, grasped the true significance of these times. He has been a voice of sanity in the decades of confusion. A staggering turn in world events is soon going to erupt that will astound the whole world. As a matter of fact, two absolutely unthinkable world events are going to occur in the approximate future. First, the unthinkable nuclear World War III that could wipe every man, woman, and child off the face of this earth, annihilate all civilization is definitely going to come, but it will be stopped before any such fate finally happens. And then, just as unthinkable, is world peace an absolute utopia on Earth, and that, too,
too is definitely going to happen in the approximate future. The world is asleep. The world doesn't know what is about to strike. The world is going on as if things are going to continue just as they are. And I am warning you, they will not. There is only one authority that can tell us what is going to happen, that can give us the cause of what has happened and what will happen, so far as that is concerned, and that is the book we call the Holy Bible and its prophecies. This is the commission that Jesus Christ gave to his church, to preach the gospel of the kingdom to all the world before the end of the age, and the establishment of the kingdom of God, the coming time of world peace and happiness that Mr. Armstrong called the world tomorrow. That world tomorrow is not here yet, and so the work that God began through Herbert Armstrong will go on. Mystery of the Ages was originally written for the students at Ambassador College. In August 1985, Mr. Armstrong personally presented the new book to the students of the Fundamentals of Theology class. It would prove to be one of the last times he would speak in public. When the Bible speaks, that is God speaking, not a man. Now, it's true, Moses wrote the first five books, but it wasn't really Moses writing it. God was having him write it, and it was God writing it, but that was really inspired. And then when we come to prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, then when we come to the New Testament books, God inspired them. They are the infallible words of God. This book is not. I don't make any such claim for this book whatsoever. But I think in a way God inspired it, but not in the sense that it is the Word of God. It's as God inspired Herbert Armstrong. <laughs> and I tried to yield myself to him, and I hope I was able to yield myself, if not 100%, <laughs> 97, 98, 99%. The Bible is like a book that had been sort of cut up into about 2,000 or 3,000 pieces, and you have to get them all put together in the right order, or you can't understand them. This book puts them together, and yet this book is only a synopsis. You could say it's the gist of the Bible, the synopsis. It doesn't cover all of it but it covers the main thread of the Bible so you can understand the Bible and understand the other details when you read them in the Bible. It'll open up the Bible so that you understand it. That's what it is for. Make the Bible plain and clear and understandable. And God is such a great God when you come to really know him and who and what he is and how real he is. And I want to say that you need to read every word and you need to go over it more than once. You aren't going to get a, the full meat of this book in one reading. <clears throat> this is a book that after you've read it, you can read it a second time and then later a third time. This book is not intended to take the place of the Bible. It's intended to make it so that you will understand the Bible. You must read the Bible with it. And this is to make the Bible clear an understanding to you as you read it and bring its meaning out as you never saw it before. And I hope it will be a blessing to you. I hope you will enjoy it. It will give you great happiness and enjoyment. I hope you'll enjoy reading it. And I hope more than any other book you've ever read except the Bible. And perhaps in a sense, this makes even the Bible more clear and plain, and you'll enjoy the Bible more from now on. Will you forgive me if I get a little bit of thrill that this was then done and this <laughs> book is out now? Today's a pretty big day in my life. 
when I can hand copies of this book out to each of you. And now, in this special tribute to Herbert W. Armstrong, we are pleased to offer a free copy of Mystery of the Ages to our viewers. Time may prove Mystery of the Ages to be one of the most significant books ever written. There is a great paradox in our world today. In this 20th century, we have made incredible progress in nearly every field of knowledge, science, technology, medicine, transportation. But in spite of this progress, we still live in a world of appalling evils and suffering, famine, poverty, sickness, and war. Why is it, when knowledge is exploding, do we still not know the answers to the most fundamental questions? What is man? Why was he created? What is the purpose for human life? Or even, is there a purpose? Over 60 years ago, Herbert W. Armstrong was challenged to make an in-depth study of the Bible. He began to see that this book, so often misunderstood, did indeed contain answers. Over the years, he continued to study, developing a unique understanding of the questions that have always perplexed mankind. Mystery of the Ages is the product of that understanding, a labor of love, written in the last year of Mr. Armstrong's long and productive life. Now, I mentioned earlier about the history, the sad and tragic history, of what happened to the Worldwide Church of God after Herbert Armstrong died in January of 1986. This book here, Raising the Ruins, tells that story, and you really need that as a supplement to Mystery of the Ages. This is a powerful and profound book that tells you all that you need to know about God's purpose and plan for mankind. It really does unlock all of the, the mysteries that man has had about God and His awesome plan and purpose. So if you don't have a copy of Mystery of the Ages yet, and we really have been promoting it this past year here in the UK, Make sure that you call our operators or at least write down the information so that you can call us later today or maybe later this week. Or you can send us a text, 80800, and just type REQ along with your address and we'll send you these free books out here in the next week or two. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you next time. <music>